Hello and welcome to Exo Photography. My name is Daniel. Uh, in this video we are going to take a closer look at uh, how to find objects, how to frame them, um, how to look at them if you are a visual astronomer. Um, we are going to take a closer look at some different kinds of apps and programs. But I am also going to show you uh, a quite analog way to find objects. So the first thing I want to cover is this kind of star shots. They, they come in different books. Uh, this one is the Interstellarum Deep Sky Atlas, the field edition, uh, which is better protected against uh, dew. But we also have different apps for iPhone, iPads and uh, other tablets. These books <coughs> are quite good actually. Um, if you're like me, want to take a quick peek and doing the analog way at uh, looking at stars. This one is really, really good. To start off with, we have the quick guide. We have the magnitude, some kind of different drawings. Variable stars is marked. We also have different kinds of markings or color charts for uh, visible in the four inch telescope, eight inch, 12 inch and above uh, 12 inch telescope. So I really, really enjoy this. Um, highly recommend it. But why do I as an astrophotographer use this? Well, it kinds of it's satisfactory to, to just peek through this and, and just to have a, a look at what we are actually looking at. So I'm going to find a suitable, oh here we go, this is Bernard Loop Orion. We have the Orion Nebula. So what exactly are we seeing here? Well, it's easy to star hop um, if you have a non-computerized telescope. We can star hop and find different nebulas. Um, the horse head is actually not that easy to, to look at. As you can see here, uh, I believe it's listed as a 8 inch telescope object. We can also see that uh, there's a H alpha region uh, where you can preferably use a H alpha filter to see some more contrast. Um, these books does sell uh, in new copies, um, updated, and I just love poking through these. There's a big register, you can search up every object you want to, and you see Messier, uh, Caldwell, basically all of the uh, big catalogs is in here. So yeah, fantastic atlas, absolutely love this. Star hopping can be quite tedious, however, and uh, somewhat hard to start off with. This is when the iPad really come in handy. I believe all of you is quite fully familiar with some kind of apps. This is, uh, as I said, the Sky Safari, the paid version. Really, really good. <clears throat> the trick here is if you have a computerized mount, you can actually connect it to the telescope. Hit scope, hit connect. I'm going to do that because <laughs> I had got my scope connected. And then you just press go to and the scope uh, slews to the object. We are going to take a close look at the astrophotography tool-ish <laughs> tools I use. We have the observe menu. I already entered all my details for the telescope and the camera, the focal length and such. And so I can actually, we can press the scope display. We can get a, a variety of different settings here. But just for now, uh, I have entered the NAG 10 inch F4 together with my ASI 2600mm camera. So that one is already chosen, but we can also choose uh, my nine and a quarter inch uh, Schmidt Cassegrain with the 31 millimeter luminous and the 6.3 uh, corrector. So now we have two rings here. 
So the turquoise or the blue greenish square is my camera chip. The ring outside is the field of view with my 9 and a quarter inch Schmidt Kessel grain, the 31 millimeter luminous eyepiece together with the 6.3 reducer for Schmidt Kessel grain telescopes, which is commonly sold. So this tool I, I kind of use uh, quite often. And I want to show you uh, another tool that I use and that is on the computer. Uh, and that is the Stellarium app, which is also very, very uh, commonly used. So let's head out to the computer. Everyone is quite familiar with Stellarium. That was the first program I used uh, uh, to check out how the nice guy looked. And uh, I believe everyone once in a while has stumbled upon this program. So it's totally free of use and it has uh, plugins. You can control telescope with it. You can add your equipment to get uh, field of use. You've seen me uh, preview this program before. So let's dive in. Um, on uh, and take a look at how I use this to uh, search and, and plan objects. So we got a nice view for the the night sky looking south um, approximately at nine o'clock tonight. Um, the moon is lit up by here yeah, 99.7 percent. Uh, so it's a full moon tonight. Uh, I won't be imaging. Um, it's going to rain as well uh, But let's take a look at um, How we can search for for object um, One thing is just to activate the uh, deep sky um, checkbox and then you can also check the settings for uh, the DSO or the deep sky objects I usually ticking the LDN the VBD and uh, Caldwell objects and uh, push up the magnitude to 12 uh, to be able to see some more deep sky objects. I want to photograph as a uh, long period as possible during the night so I will start by looking at objects uh, uh, rising in the east so uh, in Swedish we call it Öst and that's why it's a uh, Ö uh, there. Uh, so right smack bang in the middle we have the M3. Uh, I have been photographing M3 quite a while now uh, So I won't be photographing that anymore. We can see some galaxies starting to uh, be visible here uh, The whale galaxy and uh, You have some cluster here So this is just me. This is the uh, Berenicus coma so this looks like a nice field of view uh, with a bunch of galaxies but how will this view look at my chip? How will it fit? So we have a menu here. Uh, you can add uh, watch sensors uh, you are using and I have the ZW2600mm camera which I am using now and I have also the NAG10 telescope I want to activate that uh, view so we have uh, the stats here the ZWO camera and the NAG10 telescope so that's just perfect okay so we have a hit on the the whale galaxy and also the crowbar galaxy or the Kofuts galaxy as it's called in Swedish. So this is just one way to to, to take a look at uh, what to potentially photograph. But what do we want to uh, be looking for um, when choosing the right objects? Some galaxies might be, uh, we can zoom in on a galaxy. I am going to search for NGC 4889 Spoiler alert, this is the next object I am photographing. It looks black now, but wait until you see this view here. I really believe this is going to be beautiful. Okay, so a bunch of galaxies in a nice field of view uh, might work pretty good. Um, but if, um, if you have a single galaxy, it might be uh, the impression of that galaxy looks quite empty and lonely in the space. So for galaxy, I would like to fill up some more of the camera chip. 
the elephant trunk nebula is a vast area uh, containing a lot of uh, dark gen nebula and uh, and such which i wasn't even close to being able to fit within the uh, chip as with nebulas at least for me this is the view i had on my image which i really really enjoy so nebulas is in some way easier to frame and get good looking another thing to consider is uh, what filter you want to choose and how much you want to image those so this is a a h alpha region in this area i really got to push the the sulfur filter uh, a lot more than the H alpha, which usually has the strongest signal. The other thing you might want to look at is the magnitude on the object. So, for this uh, magnitude, it's uh, 3.5, which is quite bright. Um, there are uh, a lot of nebulas and galaxies, which is a lot fainter. You can see North America is quite bright as well. Not as bright as the Elephant Trunk Nebula, though. 4.0 if it's a really really faint nebula or galaxy you want to push the exposure time if you don't have a, a very very strong star uh, nearby in this case we have Deneb which is a very bright star it's 1.25 magnitudes if you have a wide field telescope and photograph this area you might get a really really strong saturated star in the corner so that's a bit tricky. So when I found my object I want to photograph, I frame it as I want to. So if I were to photograph the North American Nebula, uh, I might want to focus on the Mexican Gulf <laughs> Nebula, <laughs> which is here. What coordinates uh, to use? Well, in my case, I need to move the coordinates uh, onto my sequence program which controls the, the mount, the camera and such in my observatory. I can just search in my program for LDN935 but if it doesn't find that uh, catalog number I need to either use the J2000 uh, coordinates or the uh, JNOW. Uh, it does say 4 date here, for datum is 4 date and that is basically JNOW is the, the uh, current epoch today's date so you have to choose which coordinate to use most sequencing program could handle both but you won't <laughs> you don't want to mix those up uh, because the framing will be off okay so we choose an object which is going to have a nice path uh, over the night sky during the the whole night so we can capture as much as possible because even, even if you are on the uh, west southwest side and wow I really want to photograph the Christmas tree uh, cluster here you won't be able to photograph that by more than one possibly two hours before that object sets and you also want to look out for trees and such uh, in most programs you can also specify a minimum uh, horizon for me I have set that to 25 degrees so Every object below 25 degrees, it's no point photographing that because the closer to the horizon you are pointing your telescope, the more air you are photographing through. So if you point up, you have a 1.0 air mass. And I believe if you point level to the horizon, you are photographing through 38 times the air mass. So it's, it's really no point to be photographing as low as you can go um, so i usually don't start before 25 degrees and i usually don't end up photographing uh, below um, or past 25 degrees in the other end so this is the stellarium i want to show you, show you another app which is uh, quite useful and this is the astro planner um, it can be quite tricky and it's not as nice as Stellarum, but it has a lot more columns which you can choose from. So I just uploaded the Messier catalog here and this program is, is uh, a paid program. Uh, I am using the evaluating version, but I know several people using the Astro Planner. You can also plan imaging session or visual sessions, but here you can uh, categorizing and sorting out magnitude. So this is another program and the third program I 
really want to show you the actual website is the Telescopius. This is a free website. You can register with your Google or Facebook account. And it's just amazing. Uh, simple. It follows you wherever you go because it's a website. Um, just uh, write in uh, your location and what date you want to be photographing. So we can push in the, the 18th here. And we'll, it will give you a list right away um, for uh, objects uh, which is uh, uh, available for photographing. But if we hit, uh, we have a toolbox uh, where you can use calculates and planetarium. Uh, but what you really want to use uh, is the deep sky uh, section. So this is what I'm talking about. Um, so the time setting is from um, dusk to dawn or from dawn to dusk really. Um, minimum um, altitude of the object, 25 degrees for at least how long do I want to photograph? Well, at least four hours and it will narrow down the list quite dramatically. And here you can just tick off every box. Um, so we will tick off uh, every type of object. Magnitude, okay, so not faint uh, than 10 magnitudes. It lists um, the objects by size. You can sort it by, uh, well, you can see for yourself here. Declination, magnitude, next opposition, right ascension, rise time, set time, size, surface brightness, transit time, and type. But let's go for size. Um, diffuse nebula in Urza Major. You can also see uh, some nice picture and you can uh, have the field of view of your equipment. So here we have the, the actual size and the dark nebula. This website is uh, actually really really good and uh, I often use a combination of those uh, programs and sites to see what object I am going to photograph for the next at least a couple of months. I really enjoy gathering as much data as possible and this lets me do it in a controlled way. This is it for this video. I really hope you enjoy my videos. Please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions just post them in the comment section and I will try to answer them as good as possible. Keep it safe out there. Bye.